Hey everyone, how you all doing? This is Douglas Aze with Lago Financial Services. Hi everyone on Facebook, YouTube and Periscope. How you all doing today? Listen, we're about to get started. I'm just excited man. So much stuff is happening. Yesterday was a great day. Um, my cousin got married. He's like my second cousin. So he got married, man. I'm excited for him. He is excited. He's happy. I mean, it was a great, great wedding. For those of you that have been to African weddings, you know, you know how the Africans, how we do it, right? We do it real nice, real big. So many uh, opportunities to enjoy and have fun, right? Let me show you some pictures. Let me show you some pictures that I took. It's not, you know, that, that I took so you could kind of see how we um took it down well we i it's not a lot of you know just the the wedding pictures i want to show you so you know you're not going to see too much that's them the beautiful couple kissing enjoying you know i got to hang out with some of the guys you know the the night before um towards the evening we had a great time um that's another picture for of the wedding party you know that's inside so that's the traditional wedding you know we're doing the traditional um you know because we got we we have with the Igbo culture and since they didn't get to go to nigeria for it so we just did a, a a traditional wedding as well so that's my nephew i mean my cousin getting him you know and his bride looking real nice sorry you all can't see the picture you know using an i uh a iphone camera i don't have a samsung phone so excuse it you know you have all you samsung show off people but um that's another nicer picture of the bride and groom and the white wedding party and there's just the quick invitation card so yeah so that was that was exciting that was good that was it was pretty pretty awesome we had a good time we had an awesome time now folks those of you um you know that are watching this facebook live there's something i wanted to kind of go over and sorry the topic didn't show up on your feed is i i know i have the old one on there that says using life insurance to rebuild your credit sorry about that that wasn't the topic i wanted to actually talk about but today i want to help you business owners let's talk about or those of you that are looking to start a business you know so i'm going to give you some tips things that's helped me as a business owner in my 20 years of being in business man it's been that long. Good God Almighty. But um, I'm going to share some stuff. Let me just see. Some of the topics I kind of want to talk about. Let me, um, for you business, don't go into business, but not understanding um, business. You know, not understanding it. You know, but they only know how to do their, you know, as a business owner or someone brand new. You know, you used to work a, a full-time job and now you want to get into the business world. Because I get a lot of questions all the time. What should I do? I, you know, my nephew, uh, before, he just left um, back to Boston. You know, he's, uh, he, he has a full-time job. But also, he's also a, manages a group, a, a music group. So we're just talking about, you know, what they need, what he needs to set up. And so I kind of realized, you know, there's a lot of folks in his shoes that really don't understand what do I do you know, I have this great idea. I'm making things happen. I have things going on, but should I set up an LLC? Should you know what do I do first? Do I get a business name? Do I need to trademark? You know, what is it that I need to do? So here's my advice to you: if you're a business person trying, or you're someone that's trying to get into a business, and it doesn't matter what business, it could be multi-level marketing business. Those of you that are doing that um, type of business, or your mom and pop shop business or you know your your it person you you're building your it business on the side or whatever it is you're doing so the first things first you know people always ask what's the first thing i want to do well if you already know the business name that you want to use for your business the best thing you want to for the first thing you want to do is get that business locked down the name i mean get that name locked which means you need to go get it registered and have it you know out of the eyes of the public because the last thing you want is as your business continues to grow and you decide to go now register your business somebody already took your name 
and then the other thing you need to do because you're going to eventually want to get a website you don't have to get it right now but you can if you want to if you are if you can afford it do it you know get a website but first of all if you if you don't have the funds to do that because you want to set up make sure your business is going what i'll say for you to do is go go register immediately your business website name have that locked you go to godaddy and and purchase a domain name right away and get it unlocked right away and the other thing you want to do is making sure you also get um an email account you know you want to get an email account to make sure that the your your business email rhymes with your business name you don't want to be in business and be having emails like gmail.com you know those things you don't want that that's not good gmail or yahoo you know come on you you know you just have a domain name registered and have a domain business name um email address and you could actually have buy the email address i think it's like five dollars so it's not that hard folks if you're if you're watching me you know please do me a favor you know go ahead and share share this with with your your friends and people that you know i'm about to do the same thing real quick because i'm talking as we get some more people joining because I, I got a bunch of stuff i want to share with you tonight that's going to help you as a business person or someone looking to get into business because you got to know what you're doing because that's the only way you're going to grow all right so get that domain it's you could go to godaddy and, and buy that quickly and lock it in you don't need to do anything with it just save it like i have a bunch of domain names that i don't use i just kept it because those are things that i'm using i just don't want somebody else to buy for me i mean buy it ahead of time because i had one guy one time um trying to sell me my own a name i'm like okay you know what keep it go ahead and keep it i don't want it but that taught me a lesson i realized you know what i need to whatever business name i want to use i need to go ahead and purchase it for my business because always remember one thing that i've always know is whatever idea you have somebody else already has that same idea so it's the first person that implement the idea that is the one that wins so make sure you do that now i want to show you a secret that some people don't show you so let's go here real quick let me see where is it um is it this one let me see if it's this actually not that one not that one all of me okay you all can't see it yet so that's good let me bring it up for you so let me move out of this so you don't see me then you gonna see this yes fiverr this is a great site for you to go to folks fiverr it stands for five dollars or whatever but as you can see they're not cheap it's not five dollars you get start some at fifty dollars but these are people that can do stuff for you at very very low cost you know i will call you an attractive and professional voiceover so if i want to use this person right now let's say i have a voicemail i want somebody to leave a, a professional voice for me i could click on become a member of fiverr it doesn't cost you anything to be a member and i click on this and that comes up and I could listen to whatever it is that she does and see if I want to hire her. And then I look at her star rating, see if, if it's something I want to use. And then if I'm interested in working with this lady, all I got to do is now purchase the gig for her. Or, or, you know, and they have different ones. Like you see, even though it says $5, guess what? Um, you could buy different things, commercial rights, full broadcast rights. Now, again, for those of you that are also in business and you're trying to figure out how do i get clients well this is a good place that you could actually promote your business as well you could go in here and promote your business because you want to be able to be in a position where people all over the world can contact you and hit you up right you want to be able to have them say hey i want to do business with this person i want to be able to um work with you so guess what if you're a person that has a business like a a your um let's see let's see some of the stuff on here you're you, you you can do you could write resumes for people right you could do that and most times people don't a lot of people don't know what to do with when it comes to resume writing so but you you can do that for them you could write a resume on the cover letter you could do that or you could proofread and editing because a lot of people are writing books right now right they authors and whatever and you know and if you're an author you're trying to publish your book the last thing you want is just write something and don't have anybody proofread it like my book creating generational wealth when i i wrote it man i had great 
editors and proofreaders go through it because you know I, I had to do that because if I didn't do that guess what it, it, it doesn't benefit me to have something crazy come out to you guys and you know that doesn't even make any type of sense right so I made sure I, I have the right people proofread it for me so if you're that person you know that you have you can do those things here this is a website you could go in and, and register yourself again it doesn't cost you any money to do that you know, it doesn't cost you any money to do that. You can actually do that on your own without any paying people money to to do any of that. So they go to marketing. Some of you that you know are experts in this. This is a place you could go in and, and advertise what you do and have people, you know, and then for those of you that are looking for somebody to work with you, well, guess what? If you're looking for someone to do social media marketing for you, you click that and you go, and of course, please make sure you um you know, research them, read their 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 feedbacks from what people are saying about them and, and stuff like that and make sure everybody is, is supporting them, you know? Because you don't want to be in a situation where you, you pick someone that, you know, has a, a low rating. And if, if you could ask people to, to help you and, and help you kind of vet them, you know, because there's a lot of people that, that's probably vetted them already for you so you don't have to do it. So, again... That's just something down there. So make sure you go on Fiverr and, and get that, um, get get those um, um, network going and, and pick some for yourself and for the people you're trying to do business with. Make sense? All right. Let me let me bring this back up to me so you all could see your boy. Okay. Go. So again, please, you know, share, like, share, like, share, like. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm sharing it. So that um, other folks can join in. Because again, you know, it's all about making sure your business, as a as a brand new business owner, you want to be able to invite and, and learn and understand what you need to do with your business as, your, as you continue to grow. So what's the next thing you want to do as a, a new business? What's the next thing you need to do as a new business or someone step coming up? You know, you're trying to build your business, you're trying to get it going, you know, a lot of stuff. Well, the next thing is to now you've got your business registered, right? You got it registered. Now you're saying, okay, now my business is registered. I have a business name. What else should I do? Now that I have a business name, what else should I do? Well, now you got to get a LLC or should I do an LLC, S Corp, C Corp, um, limited liability, so let me actually do this. Let me do this. I normally don't do this, but I want to take you all here. Let me go back to this screen here and um, let me do this. I want to help you with this because I feel you will benefit from it. So let's go to this website. You know, the people that you all know, www.irs.gov, right? Let's go to their website. So let's go visit Uncle Sam. You know, Uncle Sam here. So I'm going to type in business structure. So let's look at that. Okay, Uncle Sam is your friend, man. You gotta remember that. They they know what they're doing. Like how they say, you know, once you know the rules, you could play the game. If you don't know the rules, you can't play. So here's what the IRS is saying. All right, and I'm gonna share something very important with you. So the fact sheet provides a quick look at the difference between the most common. So I'm gonna highlight that forms of business entities. The most common forms of business are sole proprietorship, partnership, corporations, limited liability companies, LLC. Now, you know one thing they didn't talk about? They didn't talk about the uncommon. They just said the most common forms of business. So what's the uncommon one? Well, that's a different conversation that I'm going to have with you later. Because, you know, my thing is, you know, we won't educate you later about it once you're serious about it. But here, this, all these forms of business, use a, um, you know, they file a 1040 tax form, uh, of course. But now, so, but you're starting, you know, of course, you have no money, you know, you're trying to build your business. So you could, what I want to advise you to do, though, you need to sit down with a CPA. Don't just jump on legal Zoom and set up your business. Because you need to have something written inside you. If you decide to do an L LLC... You need to have something written in your articles of incorporation or articles of understanding so you know exactly 
what your business going on. A lot of people go on, I, I pull up people's LLC sometimes and I look at what they have or even the article of incorporation and they have the cookie cutter um, information. They have the same information, you know, like it's blank. It's like there's nothing in there. It's just, a, you know, it's just a, a blank paper. No, you don't want to do that, folks. You, you don't want to do that when you set up your business. You want to make sure you write things in there that your business is going to be doing. Like, I'm in the financial service industry, so I made sure when I, I did my LLC, actually, I didn't do it. My CPA did it. He helped me with it. Because, again, I believe in paying money for things that is going to bring value to my business, to, to benefit me. You know, so spend the money. I mean, you know, sit down with the CPA. Now, my CPA is awesome because what he did, we, he did wrote the whole documents and based on my ideas and what I was going to do with my business. And he made sure he wrote everything out and, and did it and said, listen, you could run it down to Baltimore, which is because I'm in Maryland, folks. And you could go follow yourself or I could follow. I charge you money to do that. If I'm, I'm like, man, I'll just drive to Baltimore and get it done. And I wanted to go see how it's done. So I, I went to Baltimore student line and got it done. Same day, got my um, documents for my LLC, you know, not, um, notarized by them, stamped and everything and recorded immediately. So I was in business. This was 20 years ago, folks. And I became, I, I was in business right away. So now, once you get that done, you know, pay CPA. You know, some CPAs don't want to do that. They, it's too much. You know, I, I know a CPA that say, I don't want to deal with that. So, and some would do it, you know, that know what, that, that just want to help you. So, again, do your research, find the right ones for you, and they'll help you structure that for you. So, you'll be in a, a good position to get that done. So, now you got your LLC and you also got your tax ID to match with that LLC or the corporation. But before I go there, what I want you to do is also remember. You need to sit down with the CPA. The reason you want to sit down with CPA first is because the CPA will have will tell you exactly, you know, what type of structure you need to have. Because you might need to just have a sole proprietorship. That might just be what you need right now. You know, the sole proprietorship. That might be it. You might not need um too much. You know, might, that might just be what you need, the sole proprietorship. You know, so let your CPA tell you if that's what is good for you at this moment. To do a sole proprietorship now you know or a corporation what type is it s corp or c corporation you know let the cpa tell you that now on this L, um the rs website of course they break down everything for you so you want to also understand and, and read through it but you know in my opinion is i want you to sit down with a, a person that understands what they're talking about because you know you're new you don't know what's going on all this stuff might be french to you i mean it might sound like a french language so you want to make sure you sit down with an expert that understands those things so they could walk you through it and tell you what, what's the right type of business structure for your business at that moment. Now, as your business starts growing, you know, when it starts growing and you start making some money and you start making some money, you start making some money, then you want to do what? You might want to, you know, restructure a little bit differently. Now you want to find out what are they talking about? What is the one they mean by, you know, because they talked about the most common, right? So what is the uncommon? Mm-hmm. What is that? That they didn't say. They didn't, they didn't put it on that website. They didn't say anything about the uncommon ones. You know, business structure. What is that? Well, let me pull that up for you. Let me, let me, let me grab it, and I'll show you what they mean, what they don't talk about. So let's go. I'm back on their website. Okay, I'm going to pull something up for you. I'll do a search. Now, you know, of course, you know, so you see what I'm pulling up, right? You see it? This is the IRS tax for it. Income tax return for estates and trust. Hmm. They don't talk about that too much. You know, it's very, very hush hush. But I just want to show it to you just because, you know, because I'm. The information provider. I provide the information for you. So here's the U.S. income tax return for estates and trusts. So here's the other form. You know, you're familiar with 1040. There's a 1041. So that's the form right here. Okay. If you notice, it's just one page. So if you want more information about this, <laughs> contact me. I'll talk to you about it. I'll tell you which one you, you could use as a business structure that most people are not, don't even know. Some CPAs don't even have a clue. 
of what this is. This is like magic trick to them. When they see that, they're like, what is that? They don't know. Some attorneys don't know. So, you know, if you think you're going to get that information from your um, CPA, h and R block kind of guy, you know, they don't understand. They don't have a clue. So don't even worry about that. You know, but if you, you know, but now you only contact me now when you're making some money. Don't just call me, you know. I want you to start baby steps. Ain't no rush. Just baby step, little by little. You know, now we'll feed you. We'll get you. Once you, once you could eat the, you know, you know how babies start with baby formulas. They can't eat the hardcore, you know, I'm Nigerian, fufu and rice. They can't eat that when they're little. But as they get older and they're getting, you know, they're getting the game, they're getting understanding, then boom. Then we introduce them to all the other stuff, which is not that great for you. But, you know, we, we grew up eating that stuff. But, you know, that's why I see a lot of Africans with big bellies. Just, you know, they eat a lot of food, food, you know, but that's on that conversation. But yeah, so, but once you get to a position that you want to find out more about the 1041, then hit me up. You know, you know the number, um, lagofinancialservice.com, and I'll share some more inside secrets of the wealthy. You know, that's what I do. I just study the wealthy families, and I learn from them, and guess what? I share that knowledge with the people that are open to hearing it and understanding it. So we'll talk more about that later. So now you know what to do. So you got a, your business going, you got your tax ID, and you got a business name. So what's next? What else should I do? Well, the next thing to do is, what else should you do? You know what you should do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The next thing to do is get a life insurance policy. Hmm. Why do I need a life insurance policy? Well, here's the reason. Because if something happens to you, like sickness, and I'm not talking about just getting a term policy. No, don't do that. You got to still be building your wealth. You need to be saving money because guess what? Remember, you don't have a credit. Your business tax ID don't have a credit. So it's like you can't really do anything right now. But you need to have a life insurance contract. I had a life insurance when I started my business. When I didn't even know anything about insurance and i was learning but once i understood i got life insurance and as 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 i became more knowledgeable about life insurance i i got i started putting a lot more money in it i started using that like a savings account and as a as a emergency account and also as a supplement for my retirement account back then instead of doing that why well because later down the line even though i was single when i started my business i was young i was 27 actually 24 years old but I got my pulse, my false pulse at 27. But then, you know, I was single, no kid, you know, no no situation going on. But guess what? Once I got married, I was able to use my life insurance policy to pay for my wedding. I also used my life insurance policy to start a medical practice for my ex, you know, and, and we still have the, the practice still in existence, AZ Family Health Center with no debt. I mean, how many medical practices, how many doctors do you know start a medical practice with zero debt zero none a lot of them is hard unless they come into inheritance so what i did i loaned money to the medical practice used my life insurance contract and borrowed money against my life insurance policy and started the medical practice so guess who the bank was me the medical practice the agreement was to pay back you know once the money starts coming in of course it's family business of course so you know, you really don't look at that too much, but that's the idea. So my point to you is once you start your business and you start that insurance policy or whatever it is, you start putting money. You don't have to start with a lot of money. I didn't start with thousands of dollars. My policy was like $150 a month, but it was cash value. The, every time I paid that, I put that $150 in there, I was making, it was growing for me because the insurance company would take their portion, maybe $80 of that money to pay for the coverage and then the rest of the money they applied interest to it and then I start as I got knowledgeable about what they call maximum funding in life insurance con contract because when I started you know the the people that were teaching me this stuff didn't know a whole lot about insurance so I had to learn a, a lot outside of the box and, and start doing it you know or, or, and find out more about cash value life insurance later down the line so I started studying the wealthy and start understand what they did and you know what? I still understand what they call maximum funding the policy, which meant I could put a lot more money in there 
But because my policy was only a, a certain amount of coverage and I wasn't put, I was only putting $150, the maximum I could put in was $500 a month. So I started doing $500 a month once I found out. But the good news, though, here's something else. The good news about that was I was able to go back. So let's, let me bring out my calculator because, you know, I'm not the greatest in math, math, math. But I'll bring my calculator up real quick. So I want to sh give you an idea. So one thing with life insurance is that, remember, I started with $150 a month, right? But my maximum was $500. That's $6,000 a year. So let's say, you know, I've been paying this $150 a month for five years. That's $1,800 a year for five years times five. That means I've put in $9,000, right? Well, guess what? Oh, I did not know that because I've been putting in that amount and I've set it up, I could go back and dump more money in. So when I found out that, that blew my mind. I was so excited because not only was, because my maximum was, um, my maximum was $500, but I was only doing um, $150, right? So, which meant the IRS says I can do, I could put an additional $4,200 a year for the years that I didn't do before. So, times five years, that means I could dump $21,000 in my life insurance contract. I didn't know that back then. You know, I was young, 28, 29. What, what do I know about stuff like that? I didn't know. I was just selling insurance to make a living. Because, man, you remember I was working at IHOP, broke. Broke, working high up. I mean, I mean, how much you gonna make? So now getting into the insurance business, I was able to afford hundred and fifty dollars a month. But then, when I found out that I could dump twenty one thousand in my policy because I've had it for the last five years. Now let's check that with the IRA. Imagine if I was doing an IRA, which I had back then. So I had a SEP IRA because you know some accountant told me to do one. You know, do a SEP IRA, a small business owner. You're making over 100000 You need to do that. Okay, I did one. Because I was listening to them, you know. That's what they know. I can't blame the guy, but that's what he knew. But here, if this was a, 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 a an IRA, a traditional IRA, or even a Roth IRA, that you could only put in 5500 and you were only doing $1,800, you cannot go back and dump this amount of money. You If you didn't put it, you lose it. See, I don't understand why the government do that to you. This is your retirement account. See that? See, sometimes when I talk bad about 401k, IRAs, people look at me and say, why are you killing that? Because I don't understand why this is my retirement money. Why are you telling me how much I need to put in? I don't get it. If I want to put all my income after you've taken your taxes, why can't I just do that? Why do you have to control me? See, but as a government, folks, they do that. So... You know, excuse the, you know, sometimes I get excited about this and just, I hate when the government do that to us because they want to control everything because they, if they can control you now, guess what? When you retire, they also want to control you then because now you're broke. You can't really, you don't have a say so. Look at all the old folks that don't have, they can't say nothing. They depend on the federal government for their Medicare, for Social Security and all that. So guess what? Whatever the government says to them is what they do. I don't like that. I want to always be in control of my financial future. Even when I'm old and I can't say too much, I want to be in control all the time. So, I'm sorry for I'm still, you know, sharing my um, Facebook live because I don't know. Are you all sharing? Are you asking questions? Oh, thank you. I, I just I'm just looking at the stuff. Yeah, keys on. Thanks, bro. Yeah. All right. So let me go back. So that we got that. So um, so I did that. So I dumped twenty one thousand in. At, um, I think what well, I, I was 31 years old and I dumped 21 grand in. I'm like, wow, I could do that. Now I remember too, at this time, because I was making over six figure, you know, and I was young, 28, 29, getting paid. So living the life, driving a Mercedes Benz E320, that was my first car, paying. Now check this out. Oh yeah, this will get you because my credit was jacked up. You know, it was Jack. Trust. I, I didn't know nothing about the credit game either. You know, don't give a black man no money and don't teach him about credit. That's crazy. So I was paying. Check how much I was paying for my car. $1,000 a month. 
How much was I saving? $150. So I was paying $1,000 a month for a car note, right? And was saving $150 a month. So one time I got my 1099 and he said I made $300,000. That was the day I slapped myself. You know, I, I give myself a slap because I couldn't find the money. I'm like, man, you, you, you are, you just, you crazy. You know, you, you making a, you made 300,000. How much you got saved, dude? Dude, dude, how much you got saved? I, uh, let me look. Um, I went to my car. I said, can you give me some money, car? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, you know, that was the day I said to myself, Douglas, guess what? You better change this stuff because you are crazy. Man. So I made a decision that day. Key, I made a decision. And I said, I will never purchase anything unless I'm saving more than whatever it is. And I'll do it for six months. So for example, if I was going to buy a car, because you know, because that's where we spend our money. Yeah, it's kind of hard in here. I'm in the office. And, you know, it's a corporate building. They shut down everything. And it's a Sunday. You know, I'm, nobody's here on Sundays. We got, I'm the only one here. So, with lights and everything. So, excuse the sweat. But, um, so what, what did I say to my, I said, listen, Douglas, guess what? Because I talk to myself sometimes, folks, just to get myself going. And I motivate myself because nobody can motivate you but you. So, guess what I did? I said, okay, this is what you need to do. If you're going to buy a car. Okay, you need to save every month, whatever that car note is, save it, put it away in your insurance policy for six months. And if you could do that consistently, then you could go ahead and buy the car. But guess what happens when the six month comes? I'm no longer interested in buying the car. So if I was going to pay buy a $2,000 a month car or a car payment for $1,000 or whatever, you know, if it's $500, you know, save it for six months, see how you feel, you know, and then see how your money looks. And if you feel like you could do it, then you got to find, because now when you start saving the money, guess what happens? You're excited that you're putting away that kind of money every month. And then you wouldn't want to go give it to somebody else. Because remember, now you got to be paying that money to someone else. So that helped me change my mindset and I started saving. So today I put away close to $200,000 a year in life insurance. I have about eight policies, eight. That's put $200,000 a year. I want to do more, actually, you know, but that's what I'm doing right now. You know, it's cool. I love it. But it's helped me do so much. So, again, so remember, life insurance, you could do 100 So, as a, as a business person starting off, guess what you do? You start with 150 or $200. Just start putting that way, just in case, especially if you're married. You know, if something like that happens, at least your wife and the children can get some money to either start building the business for you because you're gone now. This is your dream. This is your vision. For the ladies, same thing. You know, you want to do that. So if something happens, your kids, how about if you get sick? How about it's not death? How about sickness? So you also want to get policies that have living benefits. We offer that as well. You know, living benefits insurance that pays for terminal illness, critical illness. That's like a heart attack stroke. Chronic illness, critical injury, you know. So those benefits kind of help. So what else do I want to tell you? Credit, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Building your business, credit. Very, very important. So as, as you start, you remember your tax ID is doesn't have, it's not like alive, it's, it's brand new. Nobody knows about that tax ID except you. So, of course, banks don't know about it either. Now, a bank, just because you bank with a, a, a company, Bank of America, Capital One, whoever, doesn't mean they're going to give you their money. See, always remember the rule is this. They will take your money, but they ain't giving you their money until they check you out. So understand that. Yeah, you could put money in the bank all day long, you know, contribute, save, put all the money in there. But when you need money from them, for them to give you their money, they don't care how long you've been saving with them. Guess what they do? They're going to check your credit. So while you're working in your business and growing your business, first of all, you need to build your personal credit. See, I didn't understand credit for a while. I mean, it took me a while to understand it because I had a timeshare that I bought. That, oh, let me tell you all that story. I don't know. I don't want to spend too much time on this. This was supposed to be a quick 20 minutes. But I bought a timeshare. Some people have timeshare works for me. Me, 
They sold me a timeshare, folks. I was young. I didn't even have papers. Yeah. I mean, come on. You all know I'm, I'm an immigrant. You can hear my accent. I wasn't born here. I didn't have... I didn't come in... My parents didn't give birth to me in America. So, understand that. So, I was an immigrant. These jokers sold me a timeshare. How am I going... It was to the Bahamas. How am I going to go to the Bahamas with, 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 with no papers? What kind of nonsense was that? And they sold me a timeshare. And me too, I bought it. You know why I bought it? Because I was young. And I bought it because they gave me... I saw white people eating rice and stew. <laughs> African guy. I saw white folks eating rice and stew. They gave me rice and stew. I didn't know they catered the stuff and brought it in. I don't even know if it was rice and stew exactly, but it had red sauce in it with rice. That took me. I was like, I'm done. I'm signing... Whatever you want, I'm signing. And I signed my life away. Didn't know that. I tried to get out of it, and I couldn't get out because I was stuck with it. So I had to file bankruptcy because of the timeshare. That was why I had that bankruptcy on my stuff. But you know what? Again, I didn't understand credit, right? So I got hold with it. So you got to understand credit, the credit game. Understand how to use it to benefit you. So later down the line, when I understood credit, and I started to understand how I could use my life insurance to build my credit, I used it to build my credit back up, and today my credit score is over 800. But as a brand new person starting off, if you don't have a credit, right? If your credit, your personal credit is bad, how about your wife's credit? Is it good? If it's good, make her a, give her a position in your company and have her co-sign for your business tax ID. Okay, hear me again. If your wife or, you know, a family member that you trust and they trust you, you could borrow their um, social security number, right? Ask them for permission, of course, and ask them and put them in your business and have them, even if they don't, you don't really have them using the business card, but they could co-sign for the tax ID so your tax ID can apply for a business credit line, like a credit card. It could be 3000 it could be 500 it could be $1,000. It don't make a difference, but just get it. And then later down the line, you could get multiple lines of credit because the more credit lines you have, the better for you. For later and the history that you create on your credit profile especially for your business helps now of course there's other dynamics that you have to do with your business but first things first that person co-signing for you helps you because they use their credit and their name to back up your tax id now once your business starts growing like right now you know i have about five tax id for five different businesses that i own um once the business starts growing, guess what you do? Now you could get rid of that credit card, you know, apply for, now you could, first of all, you get a, you apply for credit with that tax ID. Because I have, most of my tax ID now can stand on their own. They don't need me as a support anymore. They stand on their own because I've built their business credit. So they could apply for a credit card in their own name now. So guess what I do? I apply for the same card, right, that I co sign Because credit card, they don't care. These people will give you 20, they, they, so they're useless, very useless people, but you got to know them. So I apply for credit with the same, so if, let's say, for example, I have an American Express um, Platinum card, using that as an example, with my, as a co-signer, right? Now I'm going to apply for the same American Express card, now with my tax ID, with my business by itself, or standalone, or with, um, with city banks, city, city group, city bank, whatever, you know, say just those examples is what I'm giving you. So you could apply and then use that to, then you could get rid of the other credit card. And now American Express always wants you to be a co-signer on their stuff. They're just weird. They're weird people, you know, but we love their points and we love the stuff that they give you, you know, when you travel. I mean, I have so much perks. I love it. So I, I do that. So I have, I'm on my American, but I don't use it too much because they're crazy people. But there's other companies that you could stand alone, but you know, and do that. So just want to give you that tip. I hope that helps you folks because I don't know, you know, do you have any questions for me? Let's see. Do you, do you all have any questions? You know, thank you. Thank you, Charlene. You know, Royal, thank you. Hey, how are you? Kizon, thanks. Thanks a lot for that. You know, does anyone have any question for me? As we go, let me see if you have any questions uh, as I'm looking at this and, and checking. 
know? Does anyone have any question for me? Let me minimize this real quick. So, yeah. All right, people. So, that was it. You know, build your business credit and your and use your you co-sign or have somebody co-sign for you to do it. And one last tip. Let me see one of the other things that I wanted to um talk about real quick. Kind of see if there's um anything else that you guys can benefit from tonight before I get out of this office and go home to my family. Um one last thing. So we talked about credit, credit, um, LLC, tax ID, you know. Now, one last thing I want to give you. Make sure you have a, 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 a brick and mortar address where people can, where these credit card companies or biz can send mails to, okay, because that's very, very important. They need to be able to send mails to those addresses. They want to verify because they verify with the, with the post office. They, they do that. And if you're a residential address, you know, they, they, they wouldn't give you the way you know that is think about when you get when you receive a FedEx mail, right? A UPS mail or FedEx, when they come over, only they come to your residential house at, at night. They don't come during the day, they come at night. Why do they come at night? Well, because businesses work during the day. Nighttime is when individuals are home. So I always when I want to receive a FedEx package or um quickly. I always use my business address because I know I get it during the day in my office while somebody's here. And they always prioritize businesses over residential. And guess what? Because they know it, if credit card companies or people you're trying to get loans from, what they do, they do the same thing. They check you out to make sure you're not a residential. Now, if you're a residential, they will decline. They won't give you the loan. So you want to have that. And you also want to have a phone that a company somebody can answer. There's a lot of opportunities to have companies pay for that. There's there's virtual mailboxes you could get, you know, that actually has an actual address. So Google a virtual mailbox, all right? And, you know, you could use that if you can afford like a Regis or all those kind of places. There's online services that you could use. All right, people. I think that's all I got. I don't know. Anyone have any question for me? If you do, type your question in. Those of you on YouTube, I don't know if you have any question. Let me see if anybody on YouTube has a question for me. You know, while they're checking this out. Let's see. On my YouTube page. Those people watching it. Okay, no questions right now. That's cool. All right. So that's it, folks. I think I, I, I probably answered a lot of things for you. So with that, you again, thank you so much. Now, do this for me, folks. Make sure you go on. Let me Let me bring this up. I'm doing some new things now, folks. Um, this is my YouTube page, okay? Make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be putting... Do you all like my um, new logo for my YouTube page? Isn't that nice? Awesome. You know, has some great things on there. Um, and we have some new videos. I mean, a bunch of videos that we've put up. This is one of my superstars. You know, she, she talked about um, women working in the um, financial service industry um you know miss monique williams so check out her video for sure and um you know we have a lot of other things that we, we're doing here let me see i think i just saw something folks yeah this is going on right now but nobody's i just didn't want to i, I want to me see if, but i'm going to touch it later I'll, I'll talk about that later but um so folks check that out okay and one last thing i remembered i wanted to show yeah 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 this I wanted to show you all this. So I'm putting some stuff. So you're going to see some of these new logos that I've designed. Um, again, I didn't design. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, have, I had someone to do it. So, I mean, she's phenomenal, you know. So we have some new logos that we're going to be putting up that you are going to be seeing. So I'm going to put up one soon, you know. This is, you know, I hope you all like it, you know. Just some different things. You know, you got to keep growing your business. Keep doing different things. These are all different thumbnails. This is the one that we have right now on YouTube. You know, the, the Douglas A. Universal Life Insurance Mint. So a lot of great information, great things to help you grow your business. Again, don't forget, brand new folks, businesses, you know, you want to be able to go benefit your business. You no, know, and, and make sure your, your business is growing because we want to make sure you're doing awesome. Because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, it's all about you. 
it's all about your family and the more information you know the better so next week I want to talk about let me pull up something before I go into it so one of the topics that I wanted to do and I'll, I'll do it probably this week um, coming up uh, it's on um, let's see here there's different topics that I, I want to kind of share we've talked about going to business so how about mortgages you know how you get a mortgage in real estate because again a lot of times people you get advice from different people you know so let me pull up this real quick and share this with you and then we'll be done for tonight okay so a lot of times you you, you get an advice from a loan officer or, or a mortgage person depend about what type of loans to get you know but you all, as you can see all the different options the banks have is so confusing right it's too much you know 15 year mortgage 30 year mortgage negative amount. I mean, it's just too much. But you know what? Your house is probably the largest personal investment you will make. How you decide to pay for it can create unnecessary wealth transfer. Now, on my YouTube page, there's a video that I put up on a 15-year mortgage and a 30-year mortgage. I talked about that on one of my videos. So make sure you check it out. Subscribe to the YouTube page and check that out for yourself so you can understand but um, I'm going to go into a lot more of this and help you understand it a lot more. Because I believe once you understand it, the life will be a lot easier for you when you're making those decisions. You know, should I do a 30-year loan? Should I do a 15-year mortgage? You know, which one should I do? Interest only? By weekly payments? You know, all those things. Why, why? You know, because again, when you go to a bank, they're trying to sell you on the best product for them. Always remember that. The bank is always looking to offer you the best product for them and some of these loan officers don't even understand it they don't have a clue you know so you know they're going to push of course because all they're counting is the points they're going to charge you and that's it now you know they ain't going to give you a financial advice if you're looking for financial advice from a loan officer you know i don't know what to tell you but just know you got to look just looking at that i love 30-year mortgages and I have some deals that I have that is interest only mortgage alone, interest only, you know. And there's a reason for that. Interest only is not for everybody, okay? It's not for everybody. But there's some deals that I have that I use that on. And but when I have a mortgage, 30 years. If if they had a 40 year, I'm doing that. Longest term. You know why? Well, because first of all, why am I in a hurry to pay it off? Why? Doesn't make any sense, but check out the video on that. All right, people. That's all I got. You all have a great week. Again, subscribe to my YouTube page. Um, you know, follow me on Facebook. Some of you have tried to befriend me or whatever, but follow me. Just follow me on there and, you know, you get a lot of these feeds. Um, get a copy of my book, Creating Generational Wealth, tons of information. And if you, if your income is over combined, you know, over $250,000 a year and you want to and you're a business owner, or even you're an individual, but you're making some money. You know, you're, you're not in a different league, right? And you want to find out more about that form that I showed you, the 1041 form. You want to find out a little bit more about it. Give me a call. And, you know, call my office, set up an appointment with my assistant, 301-220-3555. 301-220-3555. Now, not saying I can't help those of you that are making less than 250 but I'm just saying for it to benefit you because, you know, for it to make sense for you, contact me. Uh, for it to be worth your while, you know, if you're making over 250 then I could address some things and help you with that situation. Now, everybody else, you could still contact me and we could still talk and still help you, give you some knowledge, educate you, help you see where you're going. If you have a bunch of assets and, you know, properties that is just sitting there, you, you're like, man, what should I do? contact me let's talk about it let me show you share some ideas some things and one thing that i do is i share some of the things i'm doing you know and tell you about it and see how you like it and see if you could if it makes sense for you to you know use some of my 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 techniques all right you'll have a great one enjoy i hope you had a great weekend i had one it was awesome hanging with family again congratulations to kosi and chinedu you guys are awesome Talk to you all later, everyone. Good night.